Uh, yes, I made a video this morning about the two of the down and how I think we are them. Uh, I just wanted this video to be a bit more about contemporary stuff, like what's going on at the moment. Uh, there is currently, I know it's, it's gotten very little publicity. And it's probably happening in your country too. But the Irish government have un unveiled talking about Fomorians being ugly tax collectors from across the sea. In Ireland now, every business, big and small, is required to do a climate audit. Basically, it's another set of accounting, like their books. Like you'd have, you know, the financial audit, where you'd have to have your books, and now you have a climate audit. And it's literally going to wipe out tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Irish businesses, particularly small businesses. Now, it's beyond insane. It's it's staggering, actually. And uh, basically, they have to now, businesses that are already being punished by high rates, high rents, high utility costs, say you're like a fish and chip shop or say you're a cafe, or anything, any office, any building, you're now expected to present, to hire a new kind of, an, set up a new accountancy system to monitor your carbon climate impact that will be subject and legally binding to be statutorily, you know, monitored by the government. It's just something that crazy... The government, and when I say the government, remember, I'm not just talking about politicians. In fact, they'd be down the list. I'm talking about civil servants, and I'm talking about bureaucrats. Have just devised this absolute piece of nonsense to these NPCs in government, these dullards, these, these, you know, you, say, you, heard me, you saw my video a few weeks ago where right? the psychic deterioration of people in government. In Ireland, the civil service are just like the politicians. They're all intermarried. They marriage in the same offices and everything. And so you have a, you have the banjo players from Deliverance in running all the government departments as well. People of extremely low intellect, poor character, um, showing all the, uh, all, all the, the symbols of, of, you know, genetic deterioration and so on. Now, just because of Greta Thunberg and... Al Gore have implemented the system of accountancy now regarding climate. Now, just let's say for a, there, for a moment there was a climate emergency, which there isn't, but let's say there was. Ireland produces 0.1% of the world's CO2. 0.1%. So while they have Irish small businesses going out of business because they can't achieve their climate accounting targets, the Chinese, the Chinese are shooting up oil stations and gas stations and everything every day. These people are insane. These people are psychotic. These people must be taken out and destroyed. This cannot be allowed to happen. Literally, we have a situation unfolding where in Ireland, within... 10 years, literally the only businesses that might still, especially bad for farmers now, the only businesses that will probably still exist will be civil servants and NGOs at the way things are currently going. And of course, big huge corporations like data centers, Intel, that kind of thing. Apple. Amazon. But that that will be it. That will, that will be the economy. There will be no small businesses of any kind. They would have all been wiped out by both high taxation, high costs, and punitive this carbon penal laws that have been imposed by the enemies of the Irish people, the government, who have who declared war on the Irish people in April 2020, and have been at war with us ever since. And the reason why Leo Varadkar is not a Taoiseach anymore is because, well, he's like a general that's been that's failed after an assault, and they put a new one in to finish it off. Remember that, the government are your enemies, they're out to get you. Now, they're, the best, the NGOs, the non-government organisations in this country, are the new black and tans, the new auxiliaries. Those of you who don't know that when Irish independence was being won, 
and uh, the British military was being really hammered in this country, Churchill brought over groups called the Black and Tans and the Auxiliaries. They were a last ditch effort to stop Irish independence. They were all wiped out. Nearly all of them were killed. Now, many of them were not even English or even British. There was huge numbers of Canadians, New Zealanders, South Africans in the Black and Tans and the Auxiliaries in Ireland. And they implemented incredible cruelty. And, well, that's what the NGOs are today. Many of them are populated by people not Irish. They implement cruelty. Instead of bayonets and bombs and bullets, you get council culture and this kind of thing instead. So we now, as far as I'm concerned, the NGOs are the Black and Tans and the Auxiliaries. And they provide the same purpose for the current Irish regime that they did for the British government to protect them from the Irish people. Because that was the purpose of the Black and Tans and the Auxiliaries that were brought in by Churchill towards the end of the Irish War of Independence was to protect the power structure within in government, government buildings at Dublin Castle at that time. The NGOs perform the same purpose. This is why they get funded. They get, the NGOs are paid. And they're not just paid to tell the government how wonderful they are or to create artificial policies that doesn't need to be implemented. That's part of it. But primary purpose is to protect the government. To protect the government and to oppress the people. This is why they can't, they can't finish a national children's hospital, uh, but they can put tampons in male bathrooms they can that they can't they want this is why they can't they don't want to actually provide infrastructure but you get bike planes or you get abortion access for males uh, this is the this is the appalling thing about it so the the ngos are the new black and tans and auxiliaries in this country and they are there to protect the government from the people they literally this this is literally the end, you, imagine like living in a world where you wake up in the morning and you go, you have someone you pay for them and you say to them, how, what, what have I done today? What should I do today? Well, what you're paying me to tell you to say what to do. Okay, I'll do it. That's literally how government in this country works. It's absolutely staggering. And unfortunately, it's not happening just here. It's happening in every country in different ways. Like for instance... In, I mean, Canada, an absolutely gigantic country with not a very large population considering the size of their land mass, everybody in Canada should have, like, a wonderful lifestyle. They shouldn't have any problems at all. It should be full of freedom and it should be full of abundance. And now it's looking like the next generation of Canadians will be des destined to live in poverty. Why? Because of wokeism because of the start of cultural Marxism and Bolshevism that their own Fomorians, Trudeau and, his, and the people who support him, imposed upon the Canadian people. Now, we had the situation in, I'll talk about a few things today, I'm not just, that ship was struck in Baltimore by the oil tanker. It's not a conspiracy. I, there's not, I haven't, well, if they saw proof of conspiracy, I believe it. I haven't seen any, any, anything like that. There was a catastrophic failure on the ship. It, it wrecked the navigation system. The harbor pilot couldn't get under control and it plowed into the side of the bridge and brought the whole thing down. Now, it's been known for years that all infrastructure built in the United States in the 1970s was built on the cheap and shoddy. And this was because American cities were broke following the Arab oil embargo. They literally had no money, so if they wanted to build a bridge, it was on the cheap. This is why you have infrastructure all over the United States built in the 70s that's falling apart. It's falling apart. This is why so much tr freight is now moved by rail in America. More than ever, massive amount, massive trains run by these companies like Norfolk Sudron and CSX and, you know, boring to northern Santa Fe, these massive railroads, massive Canadian Pacific, massive colossal railroads running trains that are unbelievably long uh, because the 19th century rail infrastructure that was rebuilt in the 20th century as well around World War II is actually in better condition than highways that were built in the 70s and bridges. Now, if you look at that, and those bridges were also not designed for these super tankers. Now, in a sane world... 
those tankers would be banned from entering a harbour where you had a bridge that was that flimsy that one strike against it could take it down. And do Amazon get held accountable for filling the seas full of these gigantic super container ships? Nah. Nah, nah. As the taxpayers in Baltimore will have, to, will have to fork up the building of a new bridge. Or a tunnel, wherever they used to have to replace it. And this is... Th see, the whole system now is full of bottlenecks that have been created by, this, by the system that are actually destroying the system. So, example... You have a deterioration, like Baltimore is a very good example of this, right? They had, the city itself is run by people who are all the worst kind of like crazy leftists. It's all defund the police, Black Lives Matter. Not one of them went up and said, is that bridge okay across the bay? How is the maintenance on it? And I, it'll, I guarantee you it will come out that there'll be loads of reports, right? Loads of engineers over the years said that bridge is a disaster waiting to happen. And it was a continuously ignored by the political structure in Baltimore uh, because they're all idiots. They're all, they're all, it's all there. And this is another issue too, is of uh, diversity quotas. You cannot have infrastructure or things that you know, doctors or anything that involves or nuclear with missiles, you can't have diversity quotas in those kinds of jobs because you have to have the best people available, not people who make up a certain demographic. This is another disaster waiting to be happening, this whole concept of diversity quotas. You can get away with diversity quotas in, you know, basic, say, Service jobs. No, maybe you, you, you probably can get away. But you can't get away with it where it's life or death decisions. You've got to have the best of the best up there. And I'm hearing about stories like Duke University now not saying they're, they're not going to accept, they're only going to graduate black medical students. They're only, Jesus Christ. Well, what kind of, I mean, we know, we know what the medical industry is like ever since the Rona thing. But this is all, this is dangerous way. This is so, this is so dangerous. So you've got a situation where they can't do nothing because the policy they've created has prevented from doing it. So you have like NGOs in Ireland who need 10 billion euros a year to keep them going. But there's no taxpayers in the public sector because you destroyed them all, which are accountancy, your cli climate carbon accountancy bookkeeping. And they couldn't afford to stay in business. Uh, you have rampant crime down the street because you defunded the police. And this kind of, it just end. it's just one bottleneck. They, 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 they cannot get their ducks in a row because they're, of, they're extremely low intelligence, all of them. And they're mundane people. Now, where does that leave the rest of us? Well, I've been telling, Stephen Sutton posted a meme this morning about someone who was saying what I've been saying for years. Don't wake, waste your time trying to wake the normies up. And he put it nice and succinct. He said... This, the same ones who are the normies now, in Nazi Germany, they would have been members of the, the Nazi party. And no matter what, this, no matter how many times they're screaming about far right now, if they were alive in Nazi, they're just purely orthodoxy, conventionalists of the state, dogmatists of the prevailing orthodoxy, and they attach themselves to it. Same thing with the, they would have been, have been Bolsheviks in Russia and they would have been in the uh, Red Guard in Maoist China. They just start, this is what normies are like. You cannot have conversations with them, especially the NPCs. Um, don't waste your time on them. Work on, just look after the tribes, work on the tribes. We, we are the, we are in it for ourselves. You know, I don't care, I don't want the human race to wake up and get off its knees and wake up. I don't like the human race for most of them. And I like them in less, in less and less every day. But conversely, I love the tribes more and more every day. Because I realise that, God, we are amazing. We're magical to have been able to break this cycle that the rest of them are trapped under. Like They, they can't have conversations. Not only can they not have conversations, but you can actually predict perfectly what they're all going to say regardless of what English-speaking language in the country, they in the world they live in. You know, that you know exactly what they're going to say. They'll repeat exactly what's put into their heads. And they become very frightened and disturbed 
by you bringing in curveballs. This is why the, the, the mediocre Irish badly want the hate speech laws to be brought in here. Because it's one more demarcation of life that makes it less stressful for them. You have to remember that the the average normie out there lives in a state of paralyzing anxiety, crushing insecurities. And you know what it's all about? Did I fit in properly today? Did I did I do something that made me look different today? Made me look like an outsider? Gosh, I, I hope I didn't say or do something that didn't make me fit in. This is what they're like. You can't. You will never deal with that. I said years ago that we, we should be building our own longships and sailing off into the sunset. I've been doing that since then. And that's what the tribes are. We built our own social longship and we're sailing off. And, you know, it's not just the case of us alone doing it for ourselves. We are a catholic force that will inspire more sentient people to listen to us. It's already happening. I mean, the rejection of the air for referendum in Ireland is one. And there's other things too. We have to make sure we're together on this one. Now, if you live in Dublin, I'm doing a talk possibly in the south side of the city at the beginning of May. So keep your calendars open for that. It hasn't been confirmed yet about looking for venues and stuff. But it'll be, uh, you know, it'll be, of course it won't be political. I don't believe political talks. But it'll be a kind of a, the usual, my usual thing, a rallying uh, of the soul. And a uh, chance to say hello. So there's a possibility of that if you live in Dublin. Don't forget, I'm also doing the Shine Festival in England in August and then the Mysterious Earth and AV in the autumn. And um, so there'll be a few chances to get out there and to say hello and to connect, you know, to connect because we are winning. I've no doubt about that, definitely. And any way we can keep our flag flying hold up the standard okay sanguine gnosis talk soon